Hello everyone and welcome to the starter's guide for ACC. So this is my take on what I would do if I was starting a set of course of competizione today. Because maybe you want to. Maybe you've seen some of my videos lately and gone, oh Tidge, I want to get involved in some of this racing. Whether on console or PC, this is what I would do. So let's kick straight off into this video then. What I would do first is pick one car. One car that you can go out and practice and practice and practice and know you'll like it. Now, I would advise going in a front-engine rear-wheel drive car, so an FR car. Examples of these are the BMW M4, uh, the Bentley Continental, or the Aston Martin V8 Vantage. And that's the car I'm using at the moment that you're seeing in a lot of videos. So pick one car. If you know the circuit you want to race, maybe you are trying to join a league and you know the circuit, or you've seen the competition race, you want to join that. Whatever it may be, pick that circuit, go to the track. Now, you're in the garage setting at this point, Go to setup and i would pick the aggressive setup why won't why don't i pick the stable setup well the reason i don't pick the stable setup is because it's a bit too safe i want to go with the aggressive setup because that's where a lot of setups are based on originally they start there and then they build up from there now don't worry about setups okay this is one of the things i want to get across in this video you do not need paid setups i'll talk about it at the very end about paid setups you do not need them you can go out with an aggressive setup and have some good racing so Set your fuel to 20 litres, go out on circuit and just drive four laps. Just drive four laps, get used to the track, etc. When you finish those four laps, come back to the pit, go back to the setup menu. Have a look at your tyre pressures. You want the tyre pressures to be 27.7. If they're lower than that, raise the tyre pressures so it then equals that. So you're raising to the difference. So if it's 26, you'll raise 1.7 pressure to get to 27.7. Likewise, you'll come down if it's too high. So your aim is to get all tyres to 27.7. It's 30 PSI in the wet, if you need to know wet stuff, but wet, setting up for a wet race is much more difficult because uh, you need to know how many cars are on track, clearing water, strength of rain, etc. So we're going to focus on a drying, or a, sorry, a dry track in this video. Once you've done that, go out again, have a feel of it, come back in, are these at 27.7? It may be that because you've set the tyre pressures right, you can push much harder now. Therefore, the tyre pressures have gone a bit off again. So again, just adjust them accordingly. Get them so that they're averaging around 27.7. And do this at the start-finish line, okay? At the end of the fourth flap, 27.7. Are they there? If yes, happy days. You've pretty much nailed it. Are they way off? If they are, solve that. And that's what I would do. That's the first thing I would look at, okay? When you've looked at the fuel, the fuel is now fine. You've probably adjusted that slightly. So now you're getting just enough at four laps. So I would advise doing that. That's an outlap and three fast laps. Um, I would then also adjust the brakes down to one. So in quality setup, you're always going to use brakes at one. In a race, the race setup is the fact that you will, have, if it's one hour or less, it's staying at one. If it's more than one hour, I would go to two just to be on the safe side. Okay. Um, one lasts just over an hour, I believe. That's the knowledge I've been given. That's what I use. And that's what I've always used. Okay. So let's say you've done all that now. What would I do next? Well, if the car is oversteering a lot, I would go then to the aero section, the downfall section, and I would only play with the ride height. Okay. And mainly the main thing I look at is the rear ride height. Is the rear ride height really pointy or not? So if the car is oversteering, what I mean by this is the rear is trying to overtake the front. I would think about lowering that rear ride height, made the, make the car less pointy. If the car is understeering and it just feels like it's not turning in very well, I would raise the ride height. That makes the car more pointy. It should turn in a bit more. Obviously, a lot more weight is over that front then, and the car should turn in. Remember, doing any one of these, so lowering or raising the rear ride height, does the opposite. So you're either going to be oversteering or understeering, or you know, you're trying to get to that perfect point. Which in a setup reality is never there. You're always trying to click and improve. And that's why I'm not going to go into depth in setups because I'm not very good at setups either. And again, I'll talk about this a bit later on. You could mess with the arrow, of course, by uh, the changing the downforce, etc. But I mainly changed the rear ride height because that's the easiest one to change. And you can see the impact of that. Let's just say now you have the perfect setup. What I would advise doing is saving the setup with the temperature. So for example, 23, and then put in what kind of setup it is. Is it the race setup or is it the quality setup? If it's the quality setup, I'd put a Q next to it, so 23Q. Um, I used to put both temperatures on. I only put one on now. That's after seeing what Rory did. I was like, actually, yeah, I only need one. I never look at the other one. So 23Q, for example. If I was doing a race setup, I'd put 23R. 
Now, with the race, so the way I do a race setup, so just to explain this briefly, is that I take my quality setup, I then raise the pressures by 0.2. That's my starting point, my default value I always do. The reason I do this, think about a race. At the start of a race, you are surrounded by cars. You're going to be braking, well, not as hard. You're going to be driving slower. The tires are not going to get up to the same pressure you had in quality where you are on the limit. So I always raise it by 0.2. I then also think about the temperature. So if the race is starting at 10 a.m., I'm going to go in towards 11 a.m., midday, etc. The track is and the temperature as a whole is going to get hotter. Therefore, you might want to actually only increase it by 0.1. Let's just say it's 6 o'clock in the evening. It's going to go to 7 or 8 o'clock in the evening. The temperatures are going, to go, are going to fall because the sun is setting. I would then maybe actually increase it by 0.3 to offset the uh, temperature loss. Think about that. But you only have to adjust it slightly. My default value is 0 0.2. I always normally always do 0 0.2. And that way it just counteracts racing slower because you're in the racing action. You're in the thick of it. You're like, okay, I'm going to overtake people. So that is what I would do in terms of a race setup. Again, saving it as 23R or whatever that temperature would be, R. And then you literally have, you know, if you jump into the same race again, you go, oh, okay, well, it's five degrees warmer. You can click on the 23R, for example, and go, okay, it's 5 degrees warm. It's now 28. I'm going to lower my pressures by 0.5. General rule of thumb is you lower it by 0.1 per degree of temperature. However, it's actually a bit less than that. So sometimes you might just overdo it slightly if that temperature change is drastic. Now, here's another little tip that a lot of people fall for. I've seen loads of people fall at this, and I've done it before in the past as well. Let's just say you've saved your race setup and the tire set it used was tire set three. But now you've gone out in qualifying. So this is a completely different race. You've gone out in qualifying and you've, you've used tire set one, two, and three in qualifying. Okay. You've then gone, right. Okay. I need to load the race setup. You load the race setup. Remember it's saved with tire set three. So what you've done now, the game would automatically have put you on tire set four, but you've loaded a setup. So it puts you back on tire set three. It's a used set. Be careful. Be very careful with this. I've seen a lot of people fall this, fall down here because they've quickly loaded it and thought the game would just adjust. It doesn't. It loads the exact setup. So what I would do, and this is what I've generally done, is I've always set my quality tire set to always, I save it on one, even if it's a used set. I always save it as one. And then my race setup, I always try and save it now as like a 10 or 11 tire set. So I know it's different. And then I can just increase that going forward. So just be careful of that. If you use a tire set, so let's just say it's tire set two, you've saved the race setup, setup on. You've done tire set two in qualifying. You then load the race setup. It will load the used tire. Be very careful. Be very, very careful on that. Finally, okay, we've talked about that. You go into the race, you do your thing. Now in, in the race, best way to do a pit stop, of course, is make sure you slow down enough. Have the automatic pit limit limiter on. It saved me easy. You know, I don't have to worry about it. Just get slow enough. First gear, boom, it's on. As you come into the pits, as you get near your box, make sure you turn your engine off before you get there into the pit stall. That will save you some time. It saves the game doing it. My very first endurance race, I did not know about this. It will have easily cost us 10, 15 seconds, something around that. Uh, and that potentially cost us a position or two uh, when I was racing in that charity event against Jensen Button. Even so, that is how you pit. And then just before, about five seconds before, you're gonna switch the car on again, and then off you go, foot to the floor, and it should accelerate absolutely fine. Now let me talk about paid setups then, but because I've talked about everything you need to know in terms of starter guide, you should know how to race from this. Hopefully, hopefully I've not missed anything. But even so, let's talk about the paid setups because I know that's gonna be a big question on everybody's mind. Paid setups, even if they advertise them as full eSports setups, they are not full eSports setups. And I'll explain why. Why would any team, why would any driver out there put their actual setup like to the exact point of it? They may, they, they'll adjust these slightly. Why would they put the exact setup out there that another team could just buy and use and then beat them in the race and therefore win prize money? Because there's lots of prize money available in ATC. They wouldn't do that. I'd be very, very, very surprised if they're the full, full eSports setups, okay? So don't be fooled into taking them. Second, these eSports setups are not always the best because they're suited to be a, well, they're very aggressive. So they'll be very pointy, very firm, and they may not be best for you as well. So just be careful about falling for eSports setups. Hey, setups, 
are not always good either. I mean, we experienced that at Bathurst. Joe joined the stream. Uh, he could see how bad the car was and actually fixed the setup. Now, I got this from somebody else, which and it was a paid setup. Uh, Joe helped fix it and Joe made it far better and actually had far better times and a very good racing experience. So thank you, Joe, for that. Um, we do love you on this channel. But I will say paid setups can be a very good base and a good starting point. Why do I say that? Well, for example, I've used Coach Dave Academy setups and a big thanks to David Perrell for that. And this isn't an advertisement for them. You can go and buy any setups you like, but I've used them as base setups be before. And that's what I did when I started. So I started with the aggressive setups and I started using Coach Dave Academy setups. There will be some time available in there because, you know, they will have already done the oversteering and understeering parts. And Coach Dave Academy, for example, when you buy a setup for a car, it's multiple setups for that car. So you can try out different ones. You know, if one's over aggressive, under aggressive, etc. But, and Coach Dave Academy says this as well, and this is what I love about that in particular. They say, use this as a base. It doesn't have to be the exact setup. And that's what I did when I started. That my first setup video was around the Coach Dave Academy setup. So I, I got the setup and I adjusted the camber to what I wanted and how it would work for me. And that's how I started. But just remember, pay setups, you know, they're not always good, they're not always the greatest but they can be a good base. They can be a good base. So you don't have to buy the paid setups. You don't have to. You can go in with the aggressive setup, making sure you're just for tire, tire pressures and you're golden. And I've done that before. Now you see me do it on stream. So that is my starter's guide for ACC. Apologies if that went on a bit too long, uh, but essentially pick one car, aggressive setup, tire pressure set to 27.7, brakes at one if it's less than an hour or two if it's more than an hour. If it's oversteering, lower the rear ride height, if it's understeering, raise the rear right, right height. Uh, you could mess with the aero, but I wouldn't. Um, save your setups with the temperature and the session that it's for, so qualifying or race. Um, and then literally go out and race and have some fun and enjoy ACC because it is a brilliant game. I enjoy ACC so, so much, and I hope to continue racing in it as well. Hopefully competing in a few more endurance events. That's going to be it for me, folks. I do hope you've enjoyed this video. If you have done, please do give it a like. Subscribe to the channel to stay in touch with all the latest ACC and Gran Turismo content here on YouTube. But I'd say that is it for me, and I hope to see you in another video or live stream very soon. 